I am going to bless you all today. Glory to God. I'm Like I said, it's good to have friends. So I'm going to bless you all today. I want everybody to prepare your hearts. I'm going to ask our, uh, amen, our state minister of music to render a selection for us, amen, this morning. Would you all clap your hands for the elder Demetrius Cole Free. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, that didn't sound like all of us. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And I don't know about you, but after being here, I don't have no sad story. For the Lord has been good to me. He has kept us and we are here to give him glory and honor and to praise the name of our God. I was I think I was supposed to have been here later this afternoon, but... Uh, due to schedule conflicts, I said I at least better step in and check in on my friends. And uh, obviously, we've been praying for the Simpkins family. I know you have too. And uh, I just wanted to just to peek my head in the door and to let them know that we're yet on their side. We're yet praying that God will give them strength. And I just wanted to sing a little song just for them. Now, I, I don't mind if y'all hang out in our conversation, but I just want to leave some words on record for uh, pastors, uh, Superintendent Simpkins and Lady Sheila Simpkins, the jewel of the rock. Amen. And I want to sing just a little bit of a song. I didn't know what I was coming to do. I didn't know what, what Superintendent was going to have me do. You know, I've been in Church of God in Christ 50 plus years, and I know just to be prepared for whatever may happen because you just don't know what might happen in our church. But I want to just sing this song, and we are looking forward to seeing what God would do from here. Pancho, I don't know if you old enough to know this song, son. Time is filled with swift transition. None on earth unmoved can stand. This is what I came to tell them. Build your hopes on things eternal, Lord, eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. I want to say it again that time, it's filled with swift transition. None on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things in turn. Eternal hold to God's un. Changing hand. I guess I need to talk to myself and say, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal, Lord, eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. I don't know who else this is for. Sister Michelle, you really should hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand, yeah, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, yeah, build your whole son, things eternal, eternal, Good evening, y'all. Hold 
no matter what's going on. Oh, even if you got to do it alone. Oh, to God, God. Yay! Yay! Yeah! 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 I don't know, but in my spirit right about now, it looked like I want to ask Poncho to get on the organ and Elder Toll Free to come stand right here, glory to God, and uh, deliver us a word from the Lord. So you all clap your hands, glory to God. Poncho, go to work, glory to God. Come on, come on, Elder Toll Free, glory to God. This, Hey, Maurice, glory to God, glory to God. Come on, give God some praise for this man of God. He can he 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 can preach. Glory to God. He loves the Lord and lives holy. Glory to God. So clap your hands for Elder Demetrius Toll for it. Praise the Lord. I just told the superintendent, I said that was a pretty good trick. Please, please be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I mentioned a moment ago, it is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. So much to pray for during this time. And I mentioned my friend, my friend from Good Samaritan. Now we've grown up and now she's here, missionary Michelle, praying for her and her, in the loss of her oldest brother and uh, oh God thank you sir he was my biggest fan and biggest critic but I believe that God <clears throat> even in this time that he has a word for us I was just playing when I said I was prepared for whatever but I believe there's a word from the Lord There is a passage of scripture nestled in the book of James. James, the second chapter. And I want to hang my hat at verse 23. James, the second chapter. And just for these 15 to 17 minutes, I just want to hang my hat at verse 23. Maybe the Lord did send me here on assignment and I came on what I thought was my assignment, but maybe... God has something in store for us all. Listen to the writer this morning as he speaks to us. The Bible says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abram or Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. I want to read this one more time because in this one passage are a couple of preaching nuggets that preferably we all can glean from. He says, Abraham believed or trusted God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. 
Will you do me a favor and just look over at somebody near you that's better looking than you and I want you to... See? Some of y'all didn't even turn your head. I see this is a high self-esteem church. All right. Well, if you can't find anybody better looking, just find somebody looking. And tell them, friend, I don't know what you're going through, but there's something we all need. Yeah, that's all I want to talk to you about. Something that we all need. God, touch us now in this preaching moment. God, we pray that you would give us clarity of thought, what to say and how to say. We move ourselves out the way that you might speak to us and give your people what is needed in this time. In Jesus' name we pray, thank God, and amen. Something we all need. My brothers and sisters, we live in a day and time where people are constantly, they are perpetually and continuously searching for a friend. They are searching for someone that will befriend them. People are looking for someone that will be kind, loyal, compassionate, and even concerned about them. I believe today that we're on some safe ground when I tell you that it makes no difference how old you are, uh, how young you are, how, what type of education you have or may not have. It makes no difference who your mother is, who your father is. I believe we're on some safe ground when we say that everybody wants a friend. You know, I, I believe we all want somebody who is loving and loyal. Uh, I think we all want someone that is trusted and true. We all want somebody that we can hang out with and call them our buddy. Uh, thankfully, I found that in 35, 36 years of hanging out with Pancho. We've been friends for almost 40 years. I don't know if we've had an argument, but if we did, I'm sure I won. But anyway, we all want someone who can be there for us during our time of tragedy. But the real tragedy is that there are people that live their entire lives. And at the end of a period of living, find out that they never had a true loving or abiding friend. To live and go through life without a friend would be just like John the Revelator. He was out there on the Isle of Patmos. He had no interaction from the pews. There was no one there. He found himself preaching by himself. To live and go through life without a friend would be just like the one that might have spent time in solitary confinement. You will find yourself again all hmm, by yourself. To live and go through life without a friend would be just like that person that says, no man is an island. No man stands alone. So I believe we're on some safe ground today when I tell you that everybody wants a friend. And then secondly, that everybody needs a friend. You know, I, I, I believe we all want somebody that'll be there for us in our hour of sickness. And I know what you're saying. You're looking at me, Brother Tofi, I I'm not sick. Well, keep on living. Yeah, yeah, keep on living. I, 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 I fell a few months ago and I became sick and I needed somebody to be there to pick me up when I was down. And, 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 and listen, you, you also need somebody that will be there for you in your hour of pain. It's not always 
physical pain. I don't even know why God sent me here, but I think I know. I, I, it's not always emotional pain. Some of us can go through psychological pain. Uh, but you're going to need somebody that will be there with you during that time. And, and uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that you're going to need somebody to be there when the road get rough. When the going gets tough and the hills get hard to find, you're going to need somebody. And I, 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 I talked about or mentioned that you're going to need somebody in that hour of pain. And, and, and uh, we, we don't, we, sometimes we experience pain from people we know. Uh, one of the worst hurts I've ever had didn't come from somebody on the outside of the church. I, I, I know that don't happen here at Solid Rock. I know you, you, none of y'all have ever experienced church hurts. I can look at your face and tell. But the worst hurt bumper that I ever had didn't come from somebody on the outside. You, you know, it, it, it didn't come from a, 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 a two-faced, cussing, backstabbing type person. Uh, but, but, but the worst hurt I ever experience came from a hand clapping, tongue talking, Bible toting, scripture quoting. Guess what I'm trying to tell you is that at the end of the day, we all need a friend. Uh, I know it's good to say this, but now I can say it with great fervency. Not only does everybody want a friend and Everybody needs a friend, but my grandmother and my mother, which both have gone on to see the Lord, they both told me that a good friend is hard to find. Let me hurry on with my slow self. Uh, it, it makes no difference what your relationship is with someone. It doesn't necessarily make them your friend. Uh, makes no difference if your relationship is political, if it's social, if it's corporate, mm, I'm going to get in trouble here, but sometimes even your biological acquaintances uh, isn't always your friend. Y'all looking at me crazy. Let me get some help. Come here, Cain. Uh, come here, Abel. Uh, Y'all know, you know, they were brothers. Had the same mama. Had the same daddy. But yet they were not friends. You remember what happened after a while, jealousy set in amongst brothers. And, and the Bible says that Cain killed his own brother, Abel. Okay, y'all didn't like that. Uh, well, uh, come here, Esau. Come here, son. Uh, uh, come here, Jacob. Y'all do know that they not only were brothers, but they were twins. You remember what happened? To, that Jacob conspired and got him cahoots with his mama. Cheated his brother out of his birthright. And in Genesis 27 and 40, 41, Esau hated Jacob. Hated his own twin brother. And he said, he said, look, look, look. Now, now look, I, I, I'm not going to mess with you right now because daddy's alive. Uh, but he said, you can rest assured just as soon as daddy closes his eyes, says that I'm going to get you his, his, and I, they, they were brothers, but yet they were not friends. Well, okay, well, I know y'all didn't like that. Let, 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 come, Samson, come here, son. Uh, come here, Samson. Uh, is that Delilah? C come here, daughter. Y'all remember Samson had a friend that was a girl. We, we, we don't call them girlfriends in church. She was a friend that was a girl. You remember what happened? Samson, full of vigor and vim, fooled around and laid his head in the wrong barber shop. Woke up in the morning and his strength was gone. Just because you call somebody a friend, that does not make them your friend. And... Uh, 
feel my help here. Can I get another witness real quick? Uh, Joe. Sir, uh, c come hither too. Uh, you, you, you remember Job? He had three friends. Uh, Elipaz, Bildad, and Zophar. Y'all do go to Sunday school, don't you? Uh, uh, and, and Elipaz, Bildad, and Zophar, they sat with Job for seven days and seven nights and never opened up their mouths. But at the end of seven days and seven nights, they said, well, you must have done something that was unpleasing to God. At the time when Job needed them the most, instead of them giving him a, a helping hand up, they were using their words as a foot to push him down. Just because you call somebody your brother doesn't make them your friend. Listen, my time, my time is gone. I got to go. But before I go, let me get one last witness. Jesus. Jesus, is, is, is that you, Jesus? Uh, he said, son, let, let me, he told me to move out the way and he can testify for himself. Jesus had some friends. He had 12. Uh, 12 disciples that he handpicked. But he found out that just because you handpick folk, I'm, 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 Y'all not gonna have me back. I'm sorry. I, I, I'll hoop and holler next time. But, but, but just because you hand pick folk, that doesn't necessarily make them your friend. You don't believe me? It was Deacon Thomas that doubted him. Uh, then it was Deacon Peter that denied him. Then the chairman of the board, Judas Iscariot, uh, sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus found out that even though he handpicked them, even though he had prayed for them and imparted unto them, that yet did not make them his friend. I'm on my way to my seat. I got three, I got five more minutes. I'm going to use them well. Let me look this way when I say this. There's some husbands uh, and some wives. I don't want to look at none of y'all. Let me look out the window. There are some husbands and wives share the same house, sleep in the same bed, uh, parents the same children, and nowadays probably share the same bank accounts, but yet they are not friends. If you aren't careful, brother husband, if you aren't careful, sister wife, you'll find yourself sleeping with the enemy. My daddy, I rarely talk about him. My daddy was a truck driver, and he didn't really go to church often, but he, every now and then he'd say something smart. My father, Bumper, you remember this, son. My dad would take me to church in his diesel truck. I'd be dressed just like this. And I said, Dad, I need a ride to church. He said, come on, boy. We'd be in that diesel truck going down... 580, he dropped me off. I said, Daddy, drop me off at the corner before the church. That way all the saints, they got to see me get out. He said, boy, I done brought you this far. I'm going to take you all the way. He would pull me up in front of the church, and I'd get out, and he could get out with his greasy oh, coveralls on. I said, Dad, just go ahead on. No, I see the saints. I don't, don't want to go talk to them. My dad said one thing that really hit home. He said, boy, in life, there are two things you will have. And I said, well, dad, what is that? He says, you'll have false friends and you'll have true enemies. 
Yeah, you'll catch that next week. He said you'll have false friends and true enemies. And if you come to church with a sour look on your face, not here, we're, we're, I'm talking about someone. If you have a bad disposition, it's no wonder you don't have a true or abiding friend. Uh, but I, my mama told me that, boy, if you're going to have a friend, you've got to first show yourself. Oh, y'all heard that too. Y'all had the same mama. Well, allow me to close now. I've held y'all long enough. Superintendent, thanks for thinking about this old musician that reads the Bible sometimes. When we look at the passage of scripture, just let me look at it. Now, y'all, somebody else can finish this next time. We look at the passage of scripture and James says that Abraham was called the friend of God. There were so many people in the Bible, I was wondering how did Abraham get to become God's friend? He could have picked Moses. You remember him? He was the general that led the protest march from Egypt to the promised land. Uh, he, he, he could have picked Joshua. You know that he was the one who fought the battle at Jericho. Thought he would have picked Nehemiah. You know, he was God's builder. What about Isaiah? Isaiah could have been God's friend because he was the one whose lips were touched with burning coals. Well, I, I, I really thought he would have picked Paul because Paul was the mold of the missionary movement. And then what about David who was the apple of his eye? But only Abraham was called God's friend. Uh, and I got three little points that I want to tell you that proves how he became God's friend. <laughs> Number one is that Abraham knew how to talk to God. Yeah, they had lively communication. <laughs> And if you're going to be a real friend, a real friend isn't going to say yes on everything that you say or do. Uh, I, I know I wouldn't get no help there. A, a real friend is not going to say yes even when you're wrong. Yes, yes, yes. No. A real friend will stand flat foot, look you square in the eye, and say, I don't think so. And just because we disagree doesn't mean that I'm disagreeable. Mm. I've learned in 2023 to thank God for my real friends. You know, the ones who accept me for who I am, but don't judge me for what I'm not. I'm never going to be 175 pounds again, but don't judge me. I accept my friends that accept me for who I am, but don't try to put some unrealistic standard upon me to try to make me be something that I will never be. Hmm. Abraham, 75 years old. God tells him that he's going to have a child. For 24 years, they watched and waited on this promised baby. Can you imagine 75 years old going to the mall and going to Walmart or Target, going in the baby section? Folk was laughing at him, and, but he didn't care nothing about folk laughing at him. He had received a word from his friend. And I don't know about you, but uh, if the relationship I have with God says that if God said it, makes no difference how outrageous it is. If God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Lord, my, I, I have held y'all entirely too long, but if I was to tell you in my clothes that all of us are in need of a friend, Someone that we can depend on. Someone that we can lean on. And solid rock. You all have been that friend to me.
that when I'm in need, if, 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 if I have a need that I can't handle, I believe that my friends at Solid Rock, that they would lift me up. <sighs> Lord, lift me up. And then let me stand. My heart on table, on table land. No higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on a higher ground. Is there anybody here that wants the Lord to bring you up and make a way? You need the Lord. He will walk with you. He will talk with you. And he will tell you that you're his own. Why? Because he, he's that kind of friend. Is there anybody here that knows that friend? Shout yes. Yeah. Somebody shout glory, shout glory, glory to God. Hey, come on, everybody stand on your feet. Everybody stand on your feet. While he was preaching glory to God and talking about friendship, glory to God, and really connection, heart to heart connection, it came across my spirit that there are folks in here smiling but hurting at the same time. There are folks in here who say that they have some friends, but they know that the friend is not really a friend. Sometimes they've been hanging with folks and acting like they're getting along with folk just to keep the peace. And how many know that can mess with your heart? So this morning, this afternoon, thank you, Elder Tollfree. I need some folks who need prayer for your relationships your relationships hey brother Aaron listen glory to God I heard him talk about brothers heard him talk about twin brothers heard him talk about a girl that's a friend heard, heard him talk about a brother with three friends heard him talk about a man who had 12 friends but you have some friends who have not done you well. You have some children that are in pain. You have some folks in the church you got some aughts with. Oh, you know, you got an issue with. That's it. Come on. Come on. Y'all have heard me say a million times, glory to God, and I mean it with all my heart. You'll never be delivered from anything that you don't acknowledge exists. If you got some stuff going on in your family and you need God to work it out, you didn't try everything you could. You didn't bought them ice cream, bought them a new pair of shoes. Still didn't work. You've got an issue. Glory to God. And some of it's been going on for a long, long time. It's kind of like walking with a rock in your shoe. Sometimes you walk well and other times that thing just keep hurting your feet. So you walk gingerly. There's some relationships that you have that you have to walk gingerly around. And God wants to give you peace and strength. I'm going to ask Elder Toll Free, glory to God, to come back and pray for you all. Glory to God, pray. But how many know God is able? I said, how many know God is right now able? I know he is because I read where he is a very present help. In time of trouble. Thank you so much. Come on. Those of you who are here. Glory to God. Come on. And then there's some folk out there who 
There you go. Need to come. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, sir. There might be somebody else that may want to join us here at the altar. I was trying to get myself together and as soon as I sat down, the Lord hit me right in the head and said, boy, you forgot to tell him what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. And this is the part I like. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. You might want to meet us at this altar because you had friends and your friends might have forsaken you. But I know somebody that you can tell him anything and he'll keep it just between him and you. Friend of mine, Sister Arvid Strickland Jones, used to live in San Francisco, and I'm getting ready to pray. Used to live here, and she wrote a song that everybody was laughing at until they heard the words. She said that I had a problem. I couldn't keep it to myself. She said, but I told two friends, and you know what happened? They told somebody else. She said, by the time I discovered all my business was in the street, but when I just told Jesus Christ, he kept it just between him and me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to pray. And I believe even today on this Sunday that this is a day of healing and deliverance. I believe that God can set some people free right here, right now in this service. Will you all lift your hands? Come on, lift your hands, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this time of word and, and fellowship and, and song. But God, we have people here at the altar that are in need of deliverance from you. God, makes no difference what I said, but God, you have the delivering power. You can heal, you can deliver, you can set free. And God, right now, while we're at the altar, with our hands uplifted, God, we're lifting our hands and say, Lord, here we are. We need a miracle. We need a breakthrough. We need a healing. And God, I know that you can do it because you're able. You're able to do anything but fail. And God, right now, we open up our mouths and lift you up. We open up our mouth now and give your name praise. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. God, touch right now. In the name of Jesus. Touch, touch, touch. Have your way here. In the name of Jesus. While we pray right now. Lift up that hung down head. In the name of Jesus. Give strength to the weak. God, you can do it right now. God, you're able to do it. And I'm praying now that you would touch in the name of Jesus. Touch this woman. Touch this woman in the name of Jesus. God, do it. Lift them up. Give them strength right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're doing it right now. Come on, clap your hand right there. Clap your hand right there. God is doing it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, you're doing it now. You're healing right now. You're mending broken hearts in the name of Jesus. Do it right now. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. I believe it to be done. I believe it to be done. Now clap your hand right there. Open up your mouth and praise him. Yes, God. Thank you. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for your touch. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, boy. 